This avalanche safety report is brought to you by Mountain TV. Watch Mountain TV anywhere with our free Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV apps. Learn more at mtn-tv.com. Mountain TV, part of the outside family, and we're here with Brian from the Colorado Avalanche Information Center with a weekly update. Springtime is in the air, warm temperatures, slightly reduced avalanche danger, I think. Brian, tell us more. Yeah, it's, uh, we're, we can stop the broken record. Uh, winter looks like it's going to loosen our hold on the state uh, as we move into the last part of this work week and into the weekend, and we actually really are going to experience what feels and uh, looks like spring. And so what that is going to mean is that we do have avalanche danger easing since our last storm event, which took place on kind of uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And so we're going to see mostly moderate avalanche danger across uh, most mountain areas. You may even see some areas in elevation bands which see low or generally safe avalanche conditions. This does not mean everywhere is safe, and it's certainly not open season. We still have avalanches to worry about. And I want to start with this image, which shows what most what snowpack structure looks like across a lot of mountain areas. I'm so fascinated by this picture. It really shows those crusts that you're going to explain a little bit. You can see it right there, guys. Yeah, and this was a, a snow profile that I dug yesterday on the western side of the Sawatch Range up in the Savage Lakes area. But this is really representative of what's going on in our upper snowpack across most of our mountains. And so it's April. Um, anytime we get a break in the weather, the, strong, the sun is really strong. Temperatures um, are going to be warmer. And so anytime we get that, we get crust that develop in the snowpack. And so here you can see in the, you know, the upper four feet of the snowpack, this layer cake of crust interspersed with weaker layers, which are often associated with crust development. And the most active layer has been right here, about two feet deep. This is a really thick, stout crust. So most avalanches have been running on this thick, stout crust and breaking here about two feet deep. So that's still going to drive the avalanche danger as we move into the weekend and the early part of next week. Right. And then here you can see this dust layer. And this is what blew in, unfortunately, um, on the front end of our storm that took place Tuesday and into Wednesday morning. Right. Uh, this image shows it a little bit better, but you can see we've got dust now underneath that recent snow. Um, as we move into Friday and the weekend, the temperatures are going to get warm enough that that dust uh, may surface onto the snowpack, and we can certainly expect uh, shedding on the underlying crust. So we need people to start thinking about wet avalanche activity, both on this upper crust and potentially even on some lower crust, depending on how much meltwater we pump right. into the snowpack. Brian, and I think we've all seen it. You know, even if, if you have a home in the mountains or a condo, you, you see it. It melts during the day. It kind of turns into water, gets slushy, and freezes overnight. And if it snows a little bit, that layer of snow sits right on that crust, literally. Yeah, and that's going to be a really easy bed surface for things to shed off on, especially once it sees strong April sun, which we're looking to have an actually fairly prolonged period of. And I'll show you that here. Here's the GFS model. So you can see our last system moved out Tuesday and Wednesday. And then as we move in Thursday, Friday, and the weekend, you can actually see some dry and high pressure weather building over Colorado. So this is the longest break in storms that we've had in months, really, in quite some time. And you can see we don't have another system really impacting Colorado with potentially more winter-like weather or more precip until this trough starts to dig down. But we're looking at all the way out next Thursday and Friday of next week. So we've got a week of true springtime weather. And the highlight of that springtime weather is shown here. As we see this cold air, the purple air, move out of the state, we okay. see these warmer temperatures move up into the Colorado mountains over the weekend. And we're looking at daytime highs of, you know, into the 40s at 11,000 feet. Combine that with strong April sun, and we're going to have to start worrying about wet avalanche activity, particularly on sunny slopes in the afternoon. In the sunny slopes, I was going to ask you about that, but I'm glad you led into that. Are we talking kind of south, southeast type of faces? Is that right? Yeah, so the southerly facing slopes, southeast, south, and southwest are going to be the most problematic to begin with. But um, we will see as if we have, because this is a pretty low prolonged period of uh, warm daytime highs, where you can easily see wet avalanche activity expand onto east and west aspects. East are going to be more problematic first thing in the morning because they get you know, the early sun west in the afternoon. So it's kind of really east all the way through south to west aspects. And this may creep up even into alpine elevations. The silver lining in this really warm temperatures is we look to still get good overnight freezes. And so that should keep the snowpack from falling apart. So your safest travel from the perspective of wet avalanche activity is going to be in the early morning hours. 
And I think the message for our viewers, uh, Brian, across the state here on Mountain TV is that, hey, the, the avalanche danger is lessened, but it's not gone away. And uh, you might have this perfectly spring, sunny day. Avalanche danger is just gone. You're out goofing around, but you still got to be vigilant. There's still some danger. Yeah, there is still some danger, and our snowpack is transitioning. So the weather changes like a light switch. We are going to go from winter to really much like springtime weather, like, you know, within a, a day period. The snowpack is slower to adjust, and so the snowpack is going to go through a slower transition, and it will often produce avalanches when we start introducing meltwater into portions of the snowpack for the first time. So it's we really want people to stay aware of um, how much melt, what melt water sorry, is getting pumped into the snowpack and be aware for wet avalanche activity, particularly in the afternoons. It is going to vary depending where you, in the state you are, so please get your local forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche. Okay, sounds great. We appreciate the update. Be safe out there. Have a great springtime. Uh, spring is in the air. Feels great. Uh, like you said, it's good to get out of this crazy weather pattern. Now we have some extended good weather, but be super safe. Check out the website, guys. And Brian, we'll see you back for another update. Yeah, enjoy the spring weather, everyone. Okay, thanks, Brian. You can always stay up to date with the latest forecast at colorado.gov avalanche. Enjoy the backcountry and be sure to stay safe and alert out there.